When I want to introduce an audience to Vulture View, I do it pretty simply. I hold up the cover, the book, and I tell them that this book is meant to be read aloud and that they have a part in it. So I ask the audience to repeat after me. I tell them that I have these words. Repeat after me. Up, up. Down, down. Splash. Eat. No, no. Yes, yes. And they should be listening for those words as we go through the book so that they can chime in when they come along. So I did, I did write down the words so that if you're, uh, if you're going to be introducing this book to a group, you can just take a quick screenshot of this on your phone so you can remember them just before you introduce the book because you probably haven't done this as many times as I have, unless you're a librarian. So, Vulture View. I, here's, how it go, here's how it sounds in my head. Lots of people have different ways to read it out loud. The sun is rising up, up. It heats the air up, up. Wings stretch wide to catch a ride on warming air going where? Up, up. So what I do is I go through is I pause where we have words that uh, the students and they, you know, you sort of look expectantly at them. You're showing them the sun is rising and then you might raise your hands to get them to, um, to chime in up, up. And then they just start to feel the push and pull of the language and they know when to chime in. Even if they can't see the words, even if they're in the back of the class and they can't um, see the text, they can just feel where the language is going. And this is one of those books definitely for repeated reading. Uh, so the sun is rising up, up. It heats the air up, up. Wings stretch wide to catch a ride on warming air going where? Up, up. So that's Vulture View. And you'll notice that the structure of the text has kind of a circular feel. So the vultures come back to uh, the same time of day in the end as they do in the beginning and Steve Jenkins did amazing illustrations. So that's how it introduced that book. Now if you need a segue to another book of uh, that Steve and I did together, Eat Like a Bear, uh, the text is a little bit longer than Vulture View, uh, but it, it, you can always segue with of course you know what vultures do and what they eat and go to Eat Like a Bear. Back to Vulture View, if you're going to be using this book, if you're using, using it with really uh, young kids, preschool, kindergarten, the first time around I'd read it in that sort of choral fashion uh, where you have them chiming in. But if you want to do second readings and make it a little goofier or third or fourth, um, you can have them do hand motions. Uh, by that I mean have them stand up and spread out so their wingspan doesn't hit the next per person and then you can kind of act it out so when you're going up you're standing up straight maybe even on your tiptoes when you're going down down they might sort of partially squat down and you can sort of act out the whole thing as the book is read out loud eat like a bear I suppose you could act that one out too and introduce some of the um, the chewier munching and crunching words ahead of time Woodpecker wham, of course, is a totally different kind of bird, but it, you could show how vultures, ha vultures have a different lifestyle from woodpeckers in terms of what they eat and how they search. This book is in rhyme and rhythm, so I would recommend reading it out loud, and I'm going to show you how some of that sounds to me. Again, everyone has a different way to read it out loud. Swoop and land, hitch and hop, shred a tree stump, chop, chips, chop. Instant message, tap one, two, bonk, bonk, bonk. Now back to you. So this kind of thing you might want, all these books really should be read, or read aloud fully from end to end before you chop it up and stop and point out things. Because as a read aloud book, these books have a shape. 
a beginning, a middle, an end. They have a poetic feeling. And you will miss all that if you check out every little detail of the illustrations the first time around. But for repeated readings, then you can stop and appreciate them. You could break up woodpecker wham so that um, different people in the class or different students might memorize a line or two from the book or chime in on bonk, bonk, bonk or some of the other sound words. I hope you enjoy working with these books for science read aloud and just uh, savor delicious language.